This is my money maker. Maritza Polanco's printing machine doesn't actually bring in much money these days. She uses it to print a number of products for New York businesses, but sales are down. The economy affects everybody. You know, the banking, the, uh, the, the situation with the bank, that make it more harder to get loan. With no other full-time staff, an annual revenue of about $150,000, Polanco Press is smaller than a small business. It's considered a micro-business, and for years it has survived on a special kind of loans, called micro-loans. Polanco's first loan of $4,000 came from Axion, New York. Uh, Axion is a micro-lender, which means that we work with the smallest businesses in the city, uh, f uh, businesses that have fewer than five employees most frequently, um, but can rise to about 20. I think that's the technical cutoff on a micro-enterprise. Uh, we've been in business since 1991, and in that time we've helped over 10,000 clients uh, receive the capital they need to keep their business stable and to expand them. Uh, and we've put $81 million to work uh, for micro-entrepreneurs across the city of New York. Harmon said Acción's typical loan is about $8,000. It's given four loans to Polanco, but denied her most recent request. I tried to refinance the loan we are still in New York, but they don't be able for those factors to refinance the loan. It affects me a lot right now because we try to hire two more, two more uh, graphic design to buy two more computers for continue better the project. As I do them by myself, it's too much for me. One of the things about micro lending is that uh, we manage risk carefully. We also lend with great care because it doesn't benefit Axiom or a client to take on a debt burden that they can't, um, they can't handle. Acción has been even more careful recently. Like many nonprofits, it relies on donations from foundations and loans from major banks. But due to hard economic times, Acción has seen a 15% reduction in foundation funding. We anticipate 2009 is going to be very difficult. Uh, what we're involved in today are dialogues with all of the banks who have provided us loan uh, money, uh, which we pay back to them over time with interest. They're a little concerned. Acción's ability to put money on the New York City streets has been slowed by the economic crisis. The crisis is also hitting microfinance organizations globally. Although people have been giving small loans for centuries, it wasn't until the 1970s that Grameen Bank began the modern microfinance phenomenon. Now, around the world, organizations are giving very small loans to the very poor to help lift them from poverty. They're finding loan repayment rates are higher than at most major banks and credit card companies. Microfinance is a, is, is, is a fairly simple model. At the end of the day, it's about borrowing money. What the MFI do, they borrow money, they lend money, and they make a spread. So it's pretty easy to get. Luca Torre was one of the microfinance experts who attended a recent gathering at Columbia University. He and others discussed how microfinance institutions, or MFIs, are being hit by the economic crisis. If, as we heard tonight, the cost of funding is going to increase, and I think that's definitely happening, then that's going to make it harder. Well, the MFI has two choices. They can either absorb that cost and, uh, and then not lend to the people that are it's more expensive to lend to, i.e. the really poor, or they can try to pass that cost on and increase the interest rate on their loans, but in either way it's a, it's a losing proposition for the really poor people. The really poor, however, are the people responsible for the success of the microfinance industry. Once it was found that the poor are low-risk clients who typically repay their loans between 95 and 98 percent of the time, microfinance lenders opened throughout the developing world. They grew quickly, but may slow down in the years to come. Theoretically, we, we would hope that they wouldn't lose all their funding. So I think it's more that the funding that they were hoping to get to grow further is going to be curtailed, but there still should be some minimal level of growth happening there. The impacts of the economic crisis on microfinance are complex, but not all bad. For example, experts said some investors are taking their money out of big banks and putting it into microfinance, which they think is more stable. Lenders at Axion New York see a bright side, too. While the 
credit crisis has really eliminated other forms of access. Uh, our clients never really had access to banks. What we're finding is that there are a rise in applications from those who were used to dealing with banks, um, but we are open for business and that's the best we can do for our clients. While Acción is working to adapt to the changing economic climate, Polanco is just working. For her business, it's a matter of survival. Lots of um, our clients are people who have opened businesses as a means of providing for their families. It's an alternative to minimum wage jobs that really don't promise them anything for the future. They'd like to hold on to their dreams, and being able to keep this business going is the best way for them to do that. When I go to sleep, I say, tomorrow will be a better day for me. The business is okay, but tomorrow will be great. This is my hope. This is my future. <laughs>